Ricky Henderson. Ricky Nelson Henley Henderson, born December 25, 1958, is an American retired professional baseball left fielder who played in Major League Baseball MLB for nine teams from 1979. Nicknamed the Man of Steel, he is widely regarded as baseball's greatest leadoff hitter and bass runner. He holds the major league records for career stolen bases, runs, unintentional walks, and leadoff home runs. At the time of his last major league game in 2003, the 10 time American League AL All Star ranked among the sport's top 100 all time home run hitters and was its all time leader in walks. In 2009, he was inducted to the Baseball Hall of Fame on his first ballot appearance. Henderson holds the single season record for stolen bases 130 in 1982 and is the only player in AL history to steal 100 bases in a season, having done so three times. His 1406 career steals is 50% higher than the previous record of 938 by Lou Brock. Henderson is the all-time stolen base leader for the Oakland Athletics and previously held the New York Yankees franchise record from 1988 to 2011. He was among the league's top 10 base stealers in 21 different seasons. Henderson was named the AL Most Valuable Player in 1990, and he was the leadoff hitter for two World Series champions, the 1989 Oakland A's and the 1993 Toronto Blue Jays. A 12-time stolen base champion, Henderson led the league in runs five times. His 25-year career elevated Henderson to the top 10 in several other categories, including career at-bats, games and outfield putouts and total chances. His high on base percentage, power hitting, and stolen base and run totals made him one of the most dynamic players of his era. He was further known for his unquenchable passion for playing baseball and a buoyant, eccentric, and quotable personality that both perplexed and entertained fans. Once asked if he thought Henderson was a future Hall of Famer, statistician Bill James replied, if you could split him in two, you'd have two Hall of Famers. Early Years Henderson was born on December 25, 1958, in Chicago, Illinois, in the back seat of an Oldsmobile, on the way to the hospital. Henderson later joked, I was already fast. I couldn't wait. He was named Ricky Nelson Henley, after singer-actor Ricky Nelson, and is the son of John L. Henley and Bobby Henley. When he was two years old, his father left home, and his family moved to Oakland, California, when he was seven. His father died in an automobile accident ten years after leaving home. His mother married Paul Henderson in Ricky Henley's junior year of high school, and the family adopted the Henderson surname. As a child learning to play baseball in Oakland, Henderson developed the ability to bat right-handed, although he was a naturally left-handed thrower, a rare combination for baseball players, especially non-pitchers. In the entire history of Major League Baseball through the 2008 season, only 57 position players are known to have batted right and thrown left, and Henderson is easily the most successful player to do so. Henderson later said, All my friends were right-handed and swung from the right side, so I thought that's the way it was supposed to be done. In 1976, Henderson graduated from Oakland Technical High School, where he played baseball, basketball, and football, and was an All-American running back with a pair of 1,000-yard rushing seasons. He also ran track, but did not stay with the team as the schedule conflicted with baseball. Henderson received over a dozen scholarship offers to play football. Despite a childhood dream to play for the Oakland Raiders, he turned down the scholarships on the advice of his mother, who argued that football players had shorter careers. In 1983, Henderson married his high school sweetheart, Pamela. They have three children, Angela, Alexis, and Adriana. Minor Leagues Henderson was drafted by the Oakland Athletics in the fourth round of the 1976 Major League Baseball Draft. He spent the first season of his minor league career with the boys' A's of the Northwest League. In 46 games, 
Henderson batted 336 and hit three home runs and two triples. Henderson spent the following season with the Modesto A's. He batted 345 in 134 games during his record-setting season with Modesto. Henderson, along with Darrell Woodard, nearly broke the league record for team stolen bases. The Modesto Ace finished the season with 357 stolen bases, just shy of the league record of 370. While Woodard tied the single-season player record with 90 stolen bases, Henderson beat the record by stealing 95 bases and was awarded the Sundial Trophy, given to the Modesto A's most valuable player. Henderson spent the 1978 season with the Jersey City A's of the Eastern League. After the minor league season ended, he played the 1978-1979 winter season for the Navajoa Mayos of the Mexican Pacific League. He played in six games for the team, which won its first championship. In 1979, Henderson started the season with the Ogden A's of the Pacific Coast League. In 71 games for Ogden, he had a batting average of 309 and stole 44 bases. Major Leagues Oakland Athletics 1979-1984 Henderson made his major league debut with Oakland on June 24, 1979, getting two hits and four at-bats, along with a stolen base. He batted 274 with 33 stolen bases in 89 games. In 1980, Henderson became the third modern era player to steal 100 bases in a season Maury Wills 104 in 1962 and Lou Brock's 118 in 1974 had preceded him. His 100 steals broke Eddie Collins' franchise record of 81 in 1910 with what were then the Philadelphia Athletics and set a new American League A a record, surpassing Ty Cobb's 96 set in 1915. He also batted 303, had 179 hits tied for ninth in Ale, scored 111 runs fourth in Ale, drew 117 walks second in Ale, had a 420 on base percent third in Ale, and led the Ale by reaching base 301 times. That winter, Henderson played in the Puerto Rican Professional Baseball League. His 42 stolen bases broke that league's record as well. Henderson was an MVP candidate a year later, in a season shortened by a player's strike. He hit 319 fourth in the Ale, and led the league in hits 135, runs 89, and in steals 56. Henderson was also third in on-base percentage, 408, tied for second in triples, 7, fourth in walks, 64, eighth in total bases, 185, and second in times reaching base, 201. In so doing, he became the emblematic figure of Oakland manager Billy Martin's aggressive Billy Ball philosophy, which received much media attention. Finishing second to the Milwaukee Brewers' Roly Fingers in the MVP voting, Henderson's fielding that season also earned him his only Gold Glove award. He later became known for his showboating snatch catches, in which he would flick his glove out at incoming fly balls, then whip his arm behind his back after making the catch. In 1982, Henderson broke Lou Brock's major league single season record by stealing 130 bases, a total which has not been approached since. He stole 84 bases by the All-Star break. No player has stolen as many as 84 bases in an entire season since 1988, when Henderson himself stole 93. Henderson's 130 steals outpaced nine of the American League's 14 teams that season. He also led the AL in walks 116, was fourth in runs 119 and third in on-base percent 398. Inspired by Dodgers leadoff hitter Ruddy Law, Henderson adopted an exaggerated crouch as his batting stance, which reduced his strike zone without sacrificing much power. Sports writer Jim Murray described Henderson's strike zone as being smaller than Hitler's heart. In 1982, he described his approach to Sports Illustrated, I found that if I squatted down real low at the plate, the plate, the plate, plate, the plate, the plate, 
with the plate, with the plate, with the plate, with the plate, with the plate, with the plate, with the plate, with the plate, the plate, the plate, plate, the plate, 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 the plate, with the plate. I could see the ball better. I also knew it threw the pitcher off. I found that I could put my weight on my back foot and still turn my hips on the swing. I'm down so low I don't have much of a strike zone. Sometimes, walking so much even gets me mad. Last year, at Out of the Angels got so frustrated because the umpire was calling balls that would have been strikes on anybody else that he stood up and shouted at me, stand up and hit like a man. I guess I do that to people. Regarding Henderson's 1982 season, the mid-80s book The Hidden Game of Baseball looked at such statistics as 78 expected runs with a runner on first and no outs, 1.7 expected runs with runner on second and no outs, and only 25 expected runs no one on and one out. The authors concluded that with Henderson's 130 stolen bases, he contributed 22.2 runs to the A's offense. By being caught stealing 42 times, he cost his team 20.6 runs, and therefore, the authors concluded, the net effect of his running activity was merely 1.6 extra runs for the season. A later analysis determined his net contribution was 5.3 runs for the season. Henderson also made MLB history in 1983, with his third 100 runs slash one from two one sounds as yes and long 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 which was also the final season of his first stint in Oakland. Henderson started to develop more of a power stroke hitting 16 home runs while leading the league in stolen bases 66, finishing second in runs scored 113 and third in on-base percentage 399. After the season, he was traded to the New York Yankees. As his muscular frame developed, Henderson continued to improve as a hitter. His increasing power hitting ability eventually led to a record for home runs to lead off a game. During his career, he hit over 20 home runs in four different seasons, with a high of 28 in 1986 and again in 1990. New York Yankees 1985-1989 Second stint with the Oakland Athletics 1989-1993 Following a mid-season trade to Oakland, in 1989, Henderson reasserted himself as one of the game's greatest players, with a memorable half-season in which his 52 steals and 72 runs scored led the A's into the postseason. His 126 walks for the year were the most for any AL hitter since 1970. With a record eight steals in five games, he was named MVP of the American League Championship Series. He hit... 400 while scoring eight runs and delivering two home runs, five runs batted in RBI, seven walks and a 1.0 slugging percentage, leading the A's to a four-game sweep over the San Francisco Giants and the franchise's first World Series title since 1974. Henderson hit 474 with an 895 slugging average, including two triples and a homer, while stealing three more bases. On August 22, 1989, he became Nolan Ryan's 5,000th strikeout victim, but Henderson took an odd delight in the occurrence, saying, if you haven't been struck out by Nolan Ryan, you're nobody. A year later, Henderson finished second in the league in batting average with a mark of 325, losing out to the Kansas City Royals' George Brown. Henderson had a remarkably consistent season, with his batting average falling below 320 for only one game, the third of the year, reaching safely by a hit or a walk in 125 of his 136 games, he led the league in runs 119, stolen bases 65, on base percentage 439, and OPS 1.16 was second 
in slugging percent 577, fourth in walks 97, and ex Henderson won the AL MVP award and helped Oakland to another pennant. He again performed well in the World Series, 333 batting, 667 slugging, a home run and three steals in four games, but the A's were swept by the underdog Cincinnati Reds. On May 1, 1991, Henderson broke one of baseball's most noted records when he stole the 939th base of his career, one more than Lou Brock's total compiled from 1961 to 1979, mainly with the St. Louis Cardinals. In 1993, Henderson was having another outstanding season when he was traded to the Toronto Blue Jays at the trade deadline. In 90 games with Oakland, he was batting 327 second in AL, with 17 home runs and 47 RBI. He also had scored 77 runs, stolen 31 bases, drew 85 walks, had a 469 on base percentage, and was slugging 553. On July 16, 1993, Henderson broke the world's stolen base record by stealing his 1,066th base, thus going past the record which was previously held by Yutaka Fukumoto. Toronto Blue Jays, 1993 In July 1993, the Athletics traded Henderson to the playoff-bound Toronto Blue Jays for Steve Carsey and Jose Herrera. He performed disappointingly for the Jays, hitting only 215 in 44 games, which was probably due to the fact that he fractured a bone on his hand early on with the team. After being hit by a pitch, although he still contributed 22 stolen bases and 37 runs scored. However, his hitting woes continued in the postseason, batting 120 in the American League Championship Series and 227 in the World Series. Nevertheless, Henderson was involved in the final play of the World Series that year in one fashion for which he was most known as he and Paul Molitor scored on Joe Carter's series ending home run. After winning his second World Series ring with Toronto, he re-signed as a free agent with Oakland in December 1993. Third stint with the Oakland Athletics, 1994-1995. In 1994 and 1995, Henderson finished in the top ten in the league in walks, steals, and on-base percentage. His 300 average in 1995 marked his sixth and final season in the AL with a 300 or better average. San Diego Padres, 1996-1997. Henderson signed with the San Diego Padres in the offseason, where he had another respectable year in 1996, again finishing in the top 10 in the National League NL in walks, up steals and runs. Anaheim Angels, 1997 In August 1997, Henderson was traded from the Padres to the Anaheim Angels. His brief stint as an Angel was uneventful, as he batted only 183 for the rest of the season. Fourth stint with the Oakland Athletics 1998. In January 1998, Henderson signed as a free agent with the Athletics, the fourth time he played for the franchise. That season he led the majors in stolen bases 66 and the AL in walks 118 while scoring 101 runs. New York Mets 1999-2000 A year later, Henderson signed as a free agent with the New York Mets. In 1999, he batted 315 with 37 steals and was 7th in the NL in on-base percentage. Henderson was voted the 1999 National League Comeback Player of the Year by the Sporting News. He wore number 24, which although not officially retired had not been regularly worn by a Mets player since Willie Mays' retirement in 1973. Nonetheless, Henderson and the Mets were an uneasy fit. Following the Mets' loss in the 1999 NLCS, the New York press made much of a card game between Henderson and Bobby Benilla. Both players had been substituted out of the lineup, and they reportedly left the dugout before the playoff game had concluded. 
Seattle Mariners 2000. In May 2000, Henderson was released by the Mets and quickly signed as a free agent with the Seattle Mariners. In only his second game as a Mariner, on May 20, Henderson hit a leadoff home run, thus becoming the third player to hit a home run in four different decades. Ted Williams and Willie McCovey were the others, and Omar Vizquel became the fourth in 2010. Despite the late start, Henderson finished fourth in the AL in stolen bases 31. Second stint with the San Diego Padres 2001. A free agent in March 2001, Henderson returned to the Padres. During the 2001 season, he broke three major league career records and reached an additional major career milestone. He broke Babe Ruth's record of 2062 career walks, Ty Cobb's record of 2245 career runs and Zach Wheat's record of 2328 career games in left field, and on the final day of the season, October 7, collected his 3000th career hit, a leadoff double off Rockies pitcher John Thompson in San Diego. That final game was also Tony Gwynn's last major league game and Henderson had originally wanted to sit out so as not to detract from the occasion but Gwynn insisted that Henderson play. After scoring the game's first run, Henderson was removed from the lineup. At the age of 42, in his last substantial major league season, Henderson finished the year with 25 stolen bases, ninth in the NL. It also marked his 23rd consecutive season, with more than 20 steals. Of the 10 top base stealers who were still active as of 2002, the other nine each stole fewer bases in 2002 than the 42-year-old Henderson. Boston Red Sox 2002 In February 2002, Henderson signed as a free agent with the Boston Red Sox, where at age 43, he became the oldest player to play center field in Major League history when he replaced Johnny Damon for three games in April and another in July. Henderson's arrival was marked by a statistical oddity. During the 22 and a half years from his June 1979 debut through the end of the 2001 season, he had stolen more bases by himself than his new team had 1395 steals for Henderson, 1382 for the Boston franchise. The Red Sox finally passed Henderson on April 30, 2002. At 43, Henderson was the oldest player in the American League. New York Bears, Los Angeles Dodgers, 2003. As the 2003 season began, Henderson was without a team for the first time in his career. He played in the Independent Atlantic League with the New York Bears, hoping for a chance with another major league organization. After being named the Atlantic League All-Star Game MVP and receiving much media attention, the Los Angeles Dodgers signed him over the All-Star break. In 30 games with the Dodgers, he had 15 hits and 3 stolen bases, with a 208 batting average. Retirement Coaching The New York Mets hired Henderson as a special instructor in 2006, primarily to work with hitters and to teach base stealing. Henderson's impact was noticeable on Jose Reyes, the Mets' former leadoff hitter. I always want to be around the game, Henderson said in May 2007. That's something that's in my blood. Helping them have success feels just as good. On July 13, 2007, the Mets promoted Henderson from special instructor to first base coach, replacing Howard Johnson, who became the hitting coach. Henderson was not retained as a coach for 2008. Henderson has periodically been a special instructor in the athletics spring training camps. In 2010, he worked on base, stealing most notably with Raja Davis and Coco Crisp and outfield drills. Image and Personality Sports Illustrated's Tom Verdix I wrote in 2003, There are certain figures in American history who have passed into the realm of cultural mythology, as if reality could no longer contain their stories, Johnny Appleseed, Wild Bill Hickok, Davy Crockett, Ricky Henderson. They exist on the sometimes narrow margin between fact and fiction. However, 
Henderson denied that this happened in a February 26, 2009, interview on Mike and Mike in the Morning. In 2003, he discussed his unusual phraseology, saying, people are always saying, Ricky says Ricky, but it's been blown way out of proportion. Ricky says it when Ricky doesn't do what Ricky needs to be doing. Ricky uses it to remind himself, like, Ricky, what you doing, you stupid. Henderson did use the first-person pronoun on occasion, such as when he defended his position during a contract dispute. All I'm asking for is what I want. Henderson was so proud of a $1 million signing bonus that he framed it instead of cashing it, thus losing several months' interest. Similarly, Henderson refused to spend his per diem money that all players receive on road trips. Instead, he would put the envelopes containing the cash in a box, and when one of his children performed well in school, he would invite them to choose an envelope out of the box and keep its contents. In 2002, following an argument with pitcher Orlando Hernandez, Henderson stated, he needs to grow up a little bit. I ain't a kid. When I broke into the game, he was crawling on his hands and knees. Unless he's as old as I am, he probably is. There are many unconfirmed stories about Henderson. A Padres teammate variously reported as Steve Finley or Tony Gwynn once offered him a seat anywhere on the bus saying that Henderson had tenure. Henderson supposedly replied, 10 years, what are you talking about? Ricky got 16, 17 years. One widely reported story was a fabrication that began as a clubhouse joke made by a visiting player. While playing for Seattle in 2000, Henderson was said to have commented on first baseman John Olrud's practice of wearing a batting helmet while playing defense, noting that a former teammate in Toronto did the same thing. Olrud was reported to have replied, that was me. The two men had been together the previous season with the 1999 Mets as well as with the 1993 world champion Blue Jays. Several news outlets originally reported the story as fact. Vertex I wrote, Ricky is the modern-day Yogi Berra, only faster. Henderson himself is resigned to his persona. A lot of stuff they had me doing, or something they said I had created, it's comedy. I guess that's how they want to judge me as a character. Legacy Career Milestones As of 2018, Henderson ranks first all-time in runs scored 2295 and stolen bases 1406, fourth in career games played 3,081, 11th in at-bats 10,961, and 23rd in hits 3,055. He has the second-highest career power speed number, behind Barry Bonds at 490.4. His record for most career walks 2190 has since been broken by Barry Bonds. Henderson is now second, but continues to hold the record for most unintentional walks 2129. While his career batting average of 279 is considered somewhat middling for a leadoff hitter, his walks helped him post a stout 401 on base percentage OBP for his career. He posted an OBP of at least 416 separate seasons, with a high mark of 439 in his 1990 MVP season. Henderson also holds the record for most home runs to lead off a game, with 81. Alfonso Soriano and Craig Bigu are tied for a distant second, each with 53 career lead-off home runs. During the 2003 season, Henderson surpassed Babe Ruth for the career record in secondary bases, total bases compiled from extra base hits, walks, stolen bases, and times hit by pitch. In 1993, he led off both games of a doubleheader with homers. At the time of his last major league game, Henderson was still in the all-time top 100 home run hitters with 297. Phil James wrote in 2000, without exaggerating one inch, you could find 50 Hall of Famers who, all taken together, don't own as many records, and as many important records, as Ricky Henderson. Henderson's eight steals during the 1989 Alks broke Lou Brock's postseason record for a single series. 
His record for the most postseason stolen bases was broken by Kenny Lofton's 34th career steal during the 2007 Alps, however, Lofton accomplished his total in 95 postseason games compared to Henderson's 60. Henderson is the only American League player to steal more than 100 bases in a single season, and he is the all-time stolen base leader for the Oakland A's. In 1999, before breaking the career records for runs scored and walks, Henderson was ranked number 51 on the Sporting News list of the 100 greatest baseball players and was a nominee for the Major League Baseball All-Century team. In 2005, the Sporting News updated their 100 Greatest Players list, and Henderson had inched up to number 50. On January 12, 2009, Henderson was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in his first year on the ballot, receiving 94.8% of the vote. This was the 13th highest percentage in Major League history. Asked to choose the best player in history, Henderson declined, saying, there are guys who have done different things very well, but I don't know of anyone who mastered everything. Offered the chance to assess his own placement among the game's greats, he said, I haven't mastered the homers or RBI, the little things I probably mastered. Of his various records and achievements, he values his career runs scored mark the most, you have to score to win. Records, awards and honors,